Better now? Great. So I'm very sorry. Okay, just, just start again. <laughs> Half a year ago, I worked in a project um, to implement a complex deployment process with Jenkins. And then I decided it has to be easier with the, as with the standard stuff. And then I looked around and saw that, hey, I can use Groovy. And as I have a bit of knowledge about Groovy, um, this would be a, a logical choice. So, and after that, um, yeah, I looked around and found the interconnection between Groovy and Jenkins has got a lot in the, last, uh, in the last time. So, this is what I'm talking about. I just want to show you where Groovy can help you in your job for configuring or running build jobs or deploy jobs or integration jobs with Jenkins. To me, my name is Alexander Klein. Almost anyone calls me Sasha. Sasha is the Russian short version for Alexander. I'm principal consultant and branch manager of Codecentric in Stuttgart, Germany. As I mostly try to work with Groovy because I love it. And I managed to do that for almost the last eight years. And try to continue that for the next eight, twenty, whatever. So, how could we access Jenkins with Groovy? So, now we are not in Jenkins, but outside of Jenkins. We want to have control or steer anything inside of Jenkins. Therefore, we have some execution hooks. Um, they have to reside inside of the web inf folder of the, the Jenkins war file or the exploded war file. And they're called like the hook with the ending of dot groovy. It's not so complicated. Um, and they will be executed in the lexical order how they are found in the directory. So this is sometimes very important because you, if you rely on other things. And you as well can put some um, global scripts or other scripts or the script hooks into the Jenkins home directory there with the same name. Or you as well have some kind of directory where you can put it in. As well, um, there it is executed in a lexical order. So, which kind of hooks do we have? The most important hook is the init hook. This is the one that runs at the end of the initializ initialization phase. So, that is the moment where you can pre-configure your Jenkins instance. And the other is the boot failure, in the case that boot up fails and you want to notify or send emails or do other stuff like that, or autocorrection and so on. Um, they start in the same build machine, in the same state, than any other build. Um, oh, yeah, sorry, just for an example. If you want to start Jenkins in a state where it doesn't do any build, but you can configure, can configure anything and do something like that, um, you can do that by just executing the do quiet down method in your init script. This is very useful if you want to, um, yep, if you do changes, want to check if all the plugin upgrades worked fine or anything like that, but you don't want to run build because it's on a production machine. You just change something there, want to test if it really works. So this is a way where you can kind of simulate the building. And another example would be setting the slave port and the number of executors, executors at master, uh, master node. So Jenkins is separated in a master node and you can have multiple slave nodes. And the master has to know how many slaves are there and on which port can I reach it. So it's, this can be configured inside of your um, inside of your uh, configuration, but as well, sometimes you want to 
change that based on your configuration, based on your computer where you install it. So then just do it by calling the code, like calling the num executors or setting the num executors of the instance and setting the slave agent port. You can add multiples because of that, it's the list. Or if you want to create a global credential for working with Git, so you don't ha always have to add the same credentials, you can do that as well in the initialization phase um, with this small kind of snippet. I don't want to go into details now, but and there are a whole lot others. There's a whole Git repository um, that's just full of examples of useful init scripts. So another way to access Jenkins from outside, I would say, is using the command line interface. Um, you can download that, download that, that's a jar file. Just download it and kick it off like a normal jar file. Or, yeah, with a minus jar option. So, for example, in this case, you can say, okay, Java minus jar, Jenkins CLI jar, minus s, and then the Jenkins server, the URL for the Jenkins server, and then just start Groovy and some script. So then this script will be executed on this server. So you can do that on your local machine, uh, on your development machine, you can do that for, they can use that for um, orchestrations inside of clusters and stuff like that, where you have a controlling machine and you can just execute something on a remote Jenkins host. And what's in the script? Yeah, you have all the power of Groovy. Another way is using Groovy shell. So if you want to do it interactively, just kick it off on the remote machine. The documentation you can find on this link. So, small example for if you have, yeah, if you want to activate, activate the Chuck Norris plugin in all your jobs, because it's cool and we can. <laughs> or any other plugin, it's just an example. Okay, you can just say, okay, iterate over the, inst uh, the items of the instance, so the jobs, so code, and then just go to the publish publisher's list and replace the code of Walker record, uh, recorder. This is the, uh, the Chuck Norris plugin. So you have to know the classes inside of the plugin, but I think with a bit of, bit of research, you can find that for all of the pl other plugins. Or if you want to bulk rename projects, for example, um, if you have a naming convention on your build jobs and this naming convention changes, um, then you want to change all the jobs of your Jenkins server to the name, naming, uh, new naming convention. But um, if you have 3,000 jobs on your machine, it could be some kind of cumbersome. So why not do it with a script? So just kick off a script that's disabled the... the children and then, or calls the disabled children method for all the items and iterates over them and just renames it. Those are just simple, sample ex, uh, simple examples that you can use. There are multiple ones for that. For that. Um, up to now, we had the situation that the Groovy scripts had been on your file system or in your remote machine. But sometimes you want to store the Groovy scripts on a, um, on a central place to reuse it between multiple instances or even to have it just in one place. And therefore, um, yeah, sorry, skipped the uh, wrong slide. Doesn't matter. Um, I'll come back to that. Sorry. So, for the script console. You as well have the possibility to run a Groovy script in the script console. This is just an interface, a, a, a web page, where you can just add Groovy code. You just go to your HTTP, your Jenkins URL, and then hit script. And if you call that, you can execute a Groovy script, and it just returns an HTML page. But if you expect to have another, um, any other format, so what you natively 
provides, you can use this script text URL path and it returns just the result. And additionally, it returns everything that had been put onto the system out. So on the other side, you can grab that and do things about that. So for remote access of that, you can take an easy curl, for example, in any of your scripts, give the data your own encode um, for, for changing the special characters in the URL or in the script, and you can just kick off a script. Here, with the special trick that you have, um, this is the name of the script. It has to reside in your local path where you currently are, or you can give an absolute name, and return that as the string. So it is just reading all the content of the script, putting it into the script variable, and kicking off. Um, and execute that on this URL there. And then you get a result. If you, use, uh, if you need some credentials, for example, if your Jenkins server is not open for everyone, you can give, that as, give the minus minus user argument and give your credentials and continue with, with what you want to do. Um, you find a lot of example scripts for that um, as well in the wiki of Jenkins CI. SCI. And for another very useful thing, this is the scriptler. 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 Up till now, we had the situation that we had to store all the, um, the Groovy scripts on your local machine um, or where you are. But if you want to store that with Jenkins and execute a script that is available there, therefore, it's the scriptler plugin. You have to install the scriptler plugin and there you can save and edit Groovy scripts like you would do it on a file system. You even have access to a Git repository um, so you can push your, um, your scripts to this Git repository and then it's there. Um, and you as well, additionally, you can select the node on which the script should execute. So if you want to run that single, um, single script only on this remote slave host uh, node or on this secondary master or something like that, you can do that as well with Scriptlab. And as well, you have a shared catalog. It's a public catalog. It's hosted. It's on GitHub. It's just a GitHub account. Um, where are a load of useful scripts. You can just take them, edit them, reuse them, whatever. This is the GitHub, uh, GitHub URL to find it. And yeah, this is what I said. And this repository is exposed as, um, as a, GitHub uh, a Git repository, so you can pull and push and do all those thing things you normally want to do with a central uh, repository or some central location. Documentation link for script Scriptler plugin. Scriptler plugin. Um, so up to now, we just had the, I would say, kind of accessing the, uh, the Jenkins or running Groovy inside of Jenkins. Now let's head over to another part. This is um, in injecting or using Groovy inside of your Jenkins jobs. There's a, as well, you have multiple possibilities. First of all, we have the Groovy plugin. Um, interestingly, we have uh, for, for Jenkins 2, you have Groovy 246 included in the, in the um, executable or in the installation war or something like that. Um, but still, for many other uh, plugins that had been written before that, um, you have to install the Groovy plugin to define where your Groovy instance is. So, but this is very easy. You can just install it in your, your plugins, um, configuration plugins, and a global tool configuration, and there select the Groovy plugin. You can, and after you have installed it, you can go there to the configuration page, and you can select where to install the Groovy. Either to just say, okay, download it from 
the web page, and then it's installed automatically. And you're ready to go. You just have to get, give them a name for that Groovy. You as well can deliver, deliver a SIP or a target GZ if you don't have network access to all through the wild, for example. You as well can run a batch script or a shell script, as with most of the plugin installation or configuration stuff. As soon as you have configured that, you can just create a new job. Most often, you just use a freestyle project for that. And you add a bit build step, as you would do with a Maven build or a Gradle build or whatever. Um, but th there now you have the selection or the possibility to select an execute Groovy script. And this is for your build logic, or, uh, and it runs on the slave in the forked JVM. So we have this master, and the master decides, OK, this should be run on this node, this slave node. Um, so the script will be transferred to this slave node and executed in the same, uh, in a forked JVM on the slave machine. So these Groovy scripts don't interfere with your global Jenkins stuff. If you want to, uh, want to interact with the, with the global or with the Jenkins instance because you need some information or you want to change something or whatever, you have the possibility to execute a system Groovy script. And this is mostly for configuration logic, um, like you did with the, con uh, the script console, but sometimes you want to do that just for this build. To, for example, change something, run the build, and change it back after that. Then can, you can do it like that. And this runs in the master JVM, the Jenkins master JVM, um, and not on the slave executing that, because the configuration, what you possibly change, will always be transferred to the slaves from Jenkins based. So, therefore, an image of uh, how it would look like for the execute Groovy script, you have some options like here to select which Groovy version you want to have. Um, then the Groovy command, what you want to execute. Um, you as well can check the box to uh, switch it to a script file, so you can just um, select a path in a path. For example, this is very useful if you have the Groovy script that you want to execute in the Git repository where your project lives. So you have all the things all together. So in the first step, build step, you just check out your Git repository, and after that you can execute the, grid, uh, the Groovy script that lies inside of your Git repository of this project. And as well, you can add parameters, uh, class path, what you ever would do, script parameters, properties, and all these things could, might be useful. And then you can just run your build, and it works hopefully as, expe as expected. It's almost the same with the execute system Groovy script, you just have a little bit less options. Um, another way is if you have a script in your scriptler um, storage, you as well can add a build step, build step where it's called script, a scriptler script. So and if you have that, you can just configure that as well. You can select which script you want to run and add parameters or propagate the parameters of the Jenkins job to the script, and then it will be executed. Another possibility to run Groovy is now we had it in, in the build phase, but sometimes you want to do something after the build had been finished. So you have your pipeline, and after that, send some emails, set some um, status in a gyro ticket or doing something else. So this is something you want to do post-build. Therefore, you have the Groovy post-build plugin. This is well to install it in a normal way. And after that, you have the possibility to execute the script and a script in the Jenkins VM. This runs as well in the master Jenkins VM. Useful as well for checking conditions, um, if the build really had been successful, um, or 
adding some badges and build history or displaying any information or stuff like that, notification and so on. So this is straightforward. Just go the post to the post build section and just say, okay, select add a post build, uh, build action, select groovy post build, then you have this part in your, in your interface and you can fill the script and all the other options you would need. Um, so these are mostly for small things. Uh, we would just have an action, a groovy action inside of the build. Um, if you want to do something more powerful and more variable as well, you can take usage of the pipeline plugin. The pipeline plugin is really nice. Oh, no, it's not a plugin, it's a standard plugin that is installed by default, so you don't have, have, have to install it. The inter interesting thing is that formerly it's called workflow. Now, you can, your Groovy script can configure the pipeline, so the build pipeline, what should be run, in which order and else. And this is especially interesting with more and more um, interest in the DevOps stuff, where you normally want to have your builds nearby or configured together with the, uh, with the project. You as well have the possibility to run tests on your project configuration. So, if you want to do that, you just have to write a groovy script with this special pipeline DSL. Small example for that, just configure on node. There you say, okay, first set the state to checkout. This is the first build step in your normal configuration. Then, get some code from GitHub or wherever you want to, or check out from your local, <coughs> local repository. Later then, set some variables that you would use later, set a new stage, uh, yeah, stage to build, and then run, for example, a Maven build, or Gradle build, or whatever you want to do. Here, it's just running a shell script. You can do whatever you want to. But you as well have a lot of other op options, either from Groovy by default, you can use all the Groovy um, actions, but um, there's a lot whole of other possibilities inside of DSL that's way beyond the scope of this talk. But there as well, have a look to the documentation. It's well documented and it's a major uh, main feature and well supported. As well as a good load of examples. Um, a somewhat similar approach with some differences, but almost as well, very really good, is the job DSL. Yeah, you as well can create the jobs, not only the pipeline of the build, but a bit more. You as well can configure post-build actions and pre-build actions, stuff like that, um, as code. And this is extremely useful for uh, if you, for example, have to automatically create a lot of jobs. So you can just um, run the job DSL, a job DSL script, for example, in the configuration phase or init phase, and it's just setting up all you have, or all you need. So you don't haggle with this configuration HTTP interface anymore. You do all your configuration and all your stuff for the jobs in a Groovy script as well with the same situation that you can test it and do all the stuff you could do with code. And sometimes I think copy-paste is much more easier in script than in, um, in, in a console, uh, in a web interface. Um, so, as well, you have the possibility to create templates for jobs. Very often, especially in bigger enterprises, you have the situation um, that you have a lot of projects that do almost the same or have to do the same, and it had to be configured all the same way in all the other projects. It would be nice to have a real nice template that is just configuring the base, so the one can need, uh, just needs to configure their custom stuff. 
You can use the job DSL as well for creating such templates. And of course, you have all the power for Groovy, so as well, um, power view Groovy enables you accessing web servers and Jira services and other REST interfaces and wherever and do whatever you need. There's the simplified DSL uh, that you can find on this um, on this link, and as well, there is a GitHub project. Um, with a good, or well, this is the GitHub project, and the wiki in there as well gives a good load of information and samples. Um, how to use it? As well, add a build step, uh, then and select process job DSLs. Yeah, and then you can use the provided DSL script, uh, add it here, or you can just look on the file system and execute this script or do such stuff. So, um, just one example for shown is creating a simple job, but for each branch in Git. And this is a feature that's not so easy um, because as soon as you, or oh, sometimes cumbersome, as soon as you have a new release, depends on your release strategy, you have a new branch on your system. Then you as well want to have a new job. Um, so you have to go to your Jenkins, configure a new job, do all the stuff you already did for all the other branches. The only difference is the name of the branch. Here, in this way, you can just say, okay, this is my project name. You can as well give that as an argument, stuff like that. This is the API for my, uh, for my Git repository. And then I just um, take my JSON, JSON slurper to get me the, res um, the content of that. So I get the information, slope that through, and just here create a job, because I iterate over the branches for each job, I iterate that, and my job name is, has the branch name in there. So, and then I say, okay, my job here has an SCM, so source code management, and inside there, a git, please check out the project there from this is the branch name, which gave up there, and then my steps, in this case, just run the Maven build. Um, and this really simplifies big installation a lot. Some Michelin stuff I found, and it's very helpful from time to time. It's for example, the Groovy label assignment plugin. Hmm? If the master Jenkins node has to decide on which slave node these builds should run, it normally does that by, or it does that by um, looking for uh, if, yeah, you can give labels that will be needed, for example, Windows or Linux or Mac. And on the slaves you have installed, you as well give, okay, this slave has this label or has this multiple labels and so on. So the master can just select, okay, give me a list of all the nodes and I have to find a node that has all the labels I need. This is especially important if you have multiple operation systems to build on or if you have a big um, cloud and you want to, or a big uh, cluster and you want to separate the load or any other different configurations or stuff like that. Um, but the standard functionality are just plain static labels. And the Groovy Label Assignment plugin gives me ability um, to do that by a Groovy statement. So, for an example, this is just there, there as well. You can just add a Groovy script here. It just, okay, I have this label map with all my labels here, architectures for building. And then I say, okay, um, please get me the platform from my binding of this script. Um, and all the arguments from, the, uh, from your build will be put into the, um, into the binding there, so you can read it from, in, from inside out. So in, inside of the build you say, okay, this has to run on a Linux machine. machine. So then you can find out uh, here which label 
should I look for? This is just a small example. It can be very expressive and um, complicated. Um, yeah, for using that, it's in the configuration of your build. Here you have these um, you have this Groovy script field for setting. Uh, you ha if you check the Groovy script to restrict where this project can be run in the project configuration, and they can do it. Another useful plugin is the Groovy Events Listener plugin. And this executes Groovy when an event occurred. There are some, some defined events. It's useful for notification, external applications, for customized logging, performance monitoring, or other inc or incident escalation. So for example, if the build fails, send an email to the boss or whatever, to the, to the, um, to the team. And there are a lot of, uh, there are some of these, or the events that you can have is started, stopped, the uh, plugin started, the plugin stopped, the job run, job completed, finalized, deleted, and you as well can let it run by a timer or a scheduler. Um, so, so as an example, I don't think that you can read it from up there, it's just in the picture there. For example, this is just the login and additional information or something, but use um, just a statement that it had been, the, the, an event had been fired, but you can do anything you can do in Groovy here. And another interesting thing is the Groovy remote control protocol plugin, or remote control plugin. The thing is, if you look around in the Groovy environment, you have this nice project of Groovy remote control where you can execute remote closures. So you can say, okay, this script or this closer has to run on the machine with this URL. And Jenkins gives us the ability to do that so we can execute script from outside over the remote control plugin on the JVM of Jenkins and vice versa. So we as well, from inside of our Jenkins build, we can communicate with another application um, and do things on that. Very helpful is that um, just before um, executing test cases, integration of fin or financial um, functional tests, um, and you have to um, configure any systems or you have a mock-up server and you want to give it special information that it should send back as soon as the test cases run. Or if you have to configure an automated um, robot testing console system, these are the things with this robot arm touching and touch pads and stuff like that, there very often you have to send information and configuration just before the tests to inf inform that. He, um, if you don't can or want to do that from inside of your test script or test, um, test runs, you can do that here. Um, so another thing is you can have a tight integration between two Jenkins instances. So you can really interact and synchronize them um, because sometimes there's strange um, architectures for builds where you have uh, to run a library, but it has to be of historical, whatever reason, has to be another Jenkins server so you don't have direct access. And you have to say, okay, now I need you to build that, check that into Artifactory, and after that you notify me that it's finished, and then I can continue. Or do my stuff, and so on. So therefore, it's, it's well very helpful to, you, uh, that you can use, it, use the remote control, Groovy remote control um, system. There's URL, and it's an easy configuration in the, the configure system um, where you can say here, this is the remote receiver. 
you can add one remote you receive it or receive any anything from mine you can give a name and URL um, if you want to do it vice versa you just um, execute it in a script anywhere a scriptler or all the other options you can add headers stuff like that um, in your build script as well you have a special um, groovy build script um, location for this um, but you can do it use it in other scripts as well here you can just add your script what you want to do there in your build step for example stuff me okay please send this to the remote machine and wait until this finished if I get a response I set this build step as finished and the build continues for example Um, so this is a small script how this can run uh, can look at, uh, look like here definition of the URLs um, and the HTTP transport that is used and the remote control um, a name and local just a variable and I said okay with remote this closure uh, with this remote keyword this closure will be executed on the remote system so, and this is just normal groovy code where you can do anything. And if this is finished, then it continues here on the local, um, the local code. So, it's really straightforward, very easy, and the same system outside of Jenkins as well can be very helpful for other use cases. So, it's the groovy, groovy remote control um, project is really worth a look to. And I think the last example or thing I have is the email extended uh, extension plugin, because the normal basic email notification um, functionality is really limited. And with using this plugin that is not only supporting but as well supporting Groovy, we have really the possibility to do almost anything with emails. Um, you can select the conditions when an email sh should be sent out. You can specify content um, that should be sent out for subject and body. You can configure that. Um, you can define who should receive an email and all this stuff. So this is the link for the, um, for the plugin documentation. This is really much longer than I have space on this place, so I won't go into all of the details. But there is a lengthy configuration area in your configuring um, um, UI where you as well can set where is this, the SMTP server it should use and 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 default um, email templates stuff like that. And you as well can just add a post build action. This way, where you can say just, okay, here I have a, my recipient list. These are the ones who should get that. This is my reply to list, and so on. And if you use, you can either write the normal recipient list in there if they're static, but as well you can use, I think I have it on the next slide. Yeah. You as well can use these dollar curly braces script, and then you can give a script. And this script will then be used to, evaluate, uh, to evalu evaluate the recipients or the, um, the, what's the other name, uh, the, the, the reply to list or whatever. And well, the content you can use with that. So here, just write a Groovy script that returns a string, and the string will be used as expression in this, um, in this area. The other possibility to, you have is to use the template instead of script. So the difference is just this script equals and template equals. Um, but here you, well, you can give, for example, an HTML template or a text template or whatever, just a file. Um, but here it is Groovy template engine, simple Groovy template engine. So, and there you can do anything you can do with Groovy. Um, 
and creating the content. And the result of this template is just used as the text for, that will be sent or whatever. This is really helpful, especially um, for custom notification links where you want, just want to ex extract parts of a log file and send it by email because um, especially um, a lot of, I would say, deciding people or managers want to get notified that something went wrong or had been executed, but they don't want to re read log files or stuff like that. That would be the normal behavior, just attach the log file. So this had been a walkthrough of a lot of stuff I found. There's way more other plugins that uh, use Groovy as the configuration or scripting language, or one of them. And I think the Jenkins support for grooving, Groovy that we, I think we didn't do by intention, but it had been acquired by the Jenkins community a lot, um, would be as well one of these, I would say, intriguing, introducing drugs, or as you said, gateway tracks in your talk, um, how you could get some people looking into Groovy. Um, what we did, for example, for this deployment job is, we, and starting the job, we started a uh, Rat Pack application that just runs at the time in a, pro a different process. And over all of the build steps and as well different builds, we just co uh, connected with that, interacted with that, used that as a interchange point with the REST interface. And after the build finished, we as well closed the Rat Pack. So you can do anything you can imagine. So I think Groovy is a really good fit together with Jenkins. So thanks, and do you have questions? The slides will be posted in about 10 minutes on my slide share, and I will Twitter the link as well. So if you follow the, uh, the GreatConf Twitter, you will have the link. Otherwise, come to me. I can give it to you as well. Any other questions? So then, I uh, thank you. <laughs>